Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Psalm and Bible Study. It's our first uh, Psalm study in the month of October, October the 4th, a Sunday. And on this day, we are planning to cover uh, Psalms, starting with Psalm 140. And as we study, we may come all the way through 143, depending on uh, how many, uh, how long the discussion takes, uh, as usual. So we have a, a new individual joining us uh, from Wisconsin, uh, and Wendy Hine. Uh, once you get in, Wendy, you're very welcome and nice to have you here. Um, Psalm 140 continues a section of Psalms that uh, David uh, wrote, and it's in it's the second, uh, actually the first one of his of his prayers that include. Um, uh, uh, prayers for deliverance from, from evil men, and wonderful that David has, has written that. Um, and, and this prayer for rescue is a reminder of many of the Psalms in books one and two, which deal with the slanderous attacks by David's enemies. So subtitle is Rescue Me from Evil Men, and it's for the choir director, a Psalm by David. Uh, this plea for deliverance, uh, Carol, would you uh, go ahead and read this morning, verses 1 through 5? Sure. Plea for deliverance. Keep me safe, O Lord, from the evil man. Protect me from the violent man who plans evil in his heart. Every day they gather for battle. They sharpen their tongues like a snake. The poison of vipers is under their lips. Keep me safe, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent man who plans to trip my feet. The proud have hidden a snare for me and ropes. They have spread out a net along my route, and they have set traps for me. Yeah, thank you for reading here. We have, we have this keep me safe, right? Keep me safe, O Lord, uh, an opening prayer for deliverance. And that prayer for deliverance is followed by uh, getting into uh, details, uh, developing the description of the treachery of the enemies of David. Did anybody have anything in, in that uh, treachery of David's enemies that stood out as a descriptive phrase or something applicable to something we may be facing today? Uh, Sue? Um, I was struck by the way he says they were planning all this evil. Um, it, it was so deliberate. And so many times when people do things, I think they do it a little bit more um, uh, in the spur of the moment. Um, I mean, this is really vicious hatred. Yeah, um, right. I think uh, we, we don't have a crime of passion here that, that the emotions got... Uh, got too much for them. David's enemies had planned, and I think that word plan occurs in verse 2 and in verse 4, and uh, yeah, it is very, that is, makes it a very vicious attack, and David's enemies, Saul, and even the Philistines, and, and Goliath, um, and yeah, they definitely were, were planning their attacks against David. Uh, yeah, his, his own sons planning treachery against him. Uh, any anything else in there? Anybody have a comment? Carol, please. Um, in verse three, when it talks about they sharpen their tongues like a snake, the poison of viper is under their lips. Reminds me of the Garden of Eden and description of Satan posing as a serpent. Okay, yeah. Um, part of yeah the devil's attack was that lie, that half truth that was a lie of of the devil, and. Um, and the devil is the father of lies, and his children speak lies just like him. And as we see that, uh, you know, one of, one of the biggest attacks that we Christians can face is someone who is speaking untruths, lies, uh, about us. Um, and, you know, what, what a serious damage can be done when, when our reputation uh, is, is ruined by, by lies of others. Um, yeah, the Lord is David's only hope, so he does appeal back to that. He's not trusting in his own ability to escape the traps they, they have set for him. 
All right, so uh, any other comments in this opening section plea for deliverance? Yeah, again, if you do have a comment anywhere through, just unmute your mic. I'll keep an eye on that and, and welcome you to start, uh, start talking. Uh, Kathy, would you uh, mind reading here verses 6 through 11? I say to the Lord, you are my God. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my cry for mercy. O Lord, my Lord, the strength of my salvation, you cover my head on the day for weapons. Do not grant, O Lord, the, the, the desires of the wicked. Do not let their schemes succeed when they rise up. And go ahead and take the next section as well, 9 through 11, Kathy. May the trouble caused by their lips fall on the heads of those who surround me. Let burning coals fall on them. Cause them to fall into the fire or into pits from which they will never rise. Do not let the slanderer be established in the land. As for the man of violence, may evil hunt him and beat him down. Yes, um, thank you for, for sharing there. The, the, yeah, the, just the wonderful confidence. You are my God. And, and verse 6, uh, verses 6 and 7, do you see how many times the word Lord is repeated uh, there? Right? We have Lord and then God. And we have Lord, uh, again, that's Jehovah, the, the I am, Yahweh Lord. Uh, and, and accompanied with that Yahweh Lord is mercy. And then verse 7, you have both Yahweh Lord, you know, the all capital letters, and then, the, uh, then Adonai, which is just the uh, typical uh, basic word for uh, a master or a Lord. Um, and and this, this confidence, again, uh, speaking the name of the Lord, uh, just going to him in prayer, really indicating verse 8, um, that, that reliance in him, in him totally. You notice uh, the focus on the name of the Lord. And so as David's calling for judgment, I, I listed on, on the right column there three concerns that really motivate this call for judgment. Uh, first of all, God's promises come true. Uh, uphold the honor of God, uh, the honor of his name, right? And when God keeps his promise to preserve his people and, and grant them eternal blessings, uh, that's the Lord being true to his name. That is Yahweh saying, I am who I am, and my faithfulness is going to continue. Uh, so, so God's honor is upheld when he keeps that promise. But then also that David is, is protected. He cover, his head is covered. Uh, on the day when, when weapons are coming. Um, he, he's that helmet, shield, wh whatever it may be. And then the enemies are turned away. Their schemes are, are not going to, to uh, succeed when their arrogant pride comes. Uh, and then this plea for judgment, it really follows the same thought as, as previous imprecatory psalms. Uh, a lot of this comes back to remind us of words we've heard earlier in our study, right? The, they dig the pits and they themselves fall on them, uh, burning coals, and they fall into the fire. Did anybody else think of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? The, uh, the men who stoked the fire and threw them in, they actually uh, were killed by the burning flames when uh, the three men were, were protected and preserved. Uh, what, what a neat, neat, uh, neat blessing that is. Uh, Kathy, do you have a question or comment on this section? No. Okay. Anybody else have anything that stands forward uh, uh, that you'd like to share versus 6 to 11? Okay. Um, Mark, it's really short here, but if you don't mind taking verses 12 and 13, this concluding confidence uh, that David appeals to uh, when he's uh, calling for judgment on his enemies. I know that the Lord will provide justice for the oppressed, judgment for the poor. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name. The upright will live in your presence. Yeah, justice, justice for the oppressed. And so this concluding confidence um, that we have, why are we confident? Um, just because uh, the Lord is faithful. He is faithful, and, and we can trust in his justice. Um, 
you know, what, what an application that I think of for today. And um, we, we think, and throughout all of history, there has been oppression. And sometimes the oppression that is cited today um, and, and cause, you know, the, in everything around us, uh, oppression is cited. Uh, politically, people are claiming oppression. And we see there, there have been, you know, evil people taking advantage of situation and oppressing the weak. And we would say, yes, that is wrong. It is wrong of them to do that. We will appeal to the Lord to provide justice uh, according to our calling. We may be even instruments uh, of that justice, a, a judge or an elected official or a, uh, a public safety worker. Uh, the many different opportunities that we have to do that, or even just someone who voices something in, in, in the editorial page, or 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 however we do it um, with our vote, you know that we can come up on the side of justice, um, and and we trust that the Lord will will do that. And again, notice how David, when he is oppressed and he is suffering, he does not return sin for the sin he has received. He finds a way to commit it to the Lord, uh, and he did do his part in, in following the path of the Lord and opposing evil, but he did not become evil himself. Any question here on, on Psalm uh, 140 and the deliverance uh, comments uh, when we, that we have regarding facing evil? Carol, please. Yeah, what you just said, that that is what the biggest thing that I'm going to come away with is how David prayed. And it reminds me of also how Luther prayed, especially, you know, when I use the book that has his commentary. He lived in, he lived in fear of losing his life to the authorities because of his stand on the gospel. But yet he praised the government that God had provided, that it did bring good things. And, and it, it, to have the confidence that you can pray to an almighty God that is truly powerful enough to deal with any situation and just leave it there and not act on it after you pray about it. Yes, uh, yeah, very good comments. Uh, and as, as you shared those, I was, just thinking uh, most of you who are aware um, in my immediate family we have individuals who would be racial minorities or my, my family does and, and and the racial minorities can feel the oppression that uh, that has been experienced by their race um, in recent years or years ago and, and so uh, you know my first reaction cannot be oh i'm going to totally defend uh, defend the uh, the police officers. I, I do come to their defense, but at the same time, I recognize there have been, you know, there have been people misusing that of power uh, and leading to oppression. Um, how how do I react? Well, I have to listen. I do listen to to their concerns and listen to the how they have felt oppressed or seen people with the same sc skin color as them being oppressed and the fear that brings. And like David, and like you said, Carol, repeating David's uh, mentality and his thoughts, what do we do? We go to the Lord and we do trust in his justice. And there have been earlier Psalms that have said, yeah, sometimes it doesn't appear that the Lord is functioning in the cause of justice, but that's where the trust comes in. And we go back to that with confidence uh, because of who the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, who the Lord truly is. Uh, yeah, Wendy, you're welcome to share a comment or thought. Um, so I guess I, Psalms like this are, I find them a little bit difficult because I think like David knew who his enemies were. It was really clear and it was black and white that, you know, he was on the, the, the side of right and they were on the side of wrong. And, um, and it just doesn't seem to work like that in real life it, or in our life anymore. That it's, I mean, there's all this, um, there's just so many, un, we're, we're so unclear on what really the, 
what's happening, what the truth is, who are the enemies, um, what what really is, who is oppressed. Um, I, I just feel like it's it's really difficult to apply. I it it's a struggle. Yeah, I, I hear that uh, applying God's word to our life. Oh, ex excellent question. David was the anointed king, anointed by God, proclaimed to be the, the ancestor, the Messiah. Yes, uh, his situation is different from ours in that, but it is the same as ours in that David, too, was a sinner. He needed to be called to repentance at times. And so uh, part, of, part of what I say to people with, with your exact question uh, just now, Wendy, is we we can speak very clearly where the lord speaks clearly we can condemn hatred murder uh, we can condemn rebellion against authority established by god we can condemn um, misuse of power uh, we can come out clearly and condemn them and ask the lord to to uh, provide justice but individually, I'm not going to come down and delineate, uh, okay, well, let's look at the Republicans and the Democrats and see which of them has more of the oppression in their party or which one has less or which one is a better supporter. That's not my position as a pastor. I may have my opinions, but I'll keep them to myself. And as I look out around me, I can see now, obviously, I think I, I did it to some part, uh, state uh, an application to, to daily life. It is difficult to identify, you know, who is the oppressed when the oppressed have returned the oppression they receive with, with uh, sinful actions, hatred-filled actions. And, and I guess that that ability, inability to determine who, who is right leads me again to, first of all, trust in the Lord and his ability to provide true justice and go to the Lord uh, knowing that the justice I have is not my own. It's the alien justice that I've been granted by Jesus. Um, I don't know if that helps, but, but ultimately, yeah, we do have to for form our opinions um, regarding who I'm going to vote for, but at the same time, even even that, uh, I I commit to the Lord, knowing that His His answer will will be will be a blessing. Um, I don't know if that helps, Wendy. I think so I, it just I always feel like it. Um, it just seems simpler when it's when the when the I don't know, it just feels difficult to apply. So, but that is helpful. Yeah, and, and, and yet, it, um, in no way do I want to indicate to you that uh, this is an easy application to human life um, because applying God's word to life uh, is something that we must do with prayer and returning to God's word. Uh, so. Yeah, so let's move on and step to the next psalm, uh, Guard My Lips and, and Heart. And it's another prayer uh, in response uh, to David's enemies. This one takes a, a little bit of a different tact, um, maybe the more of a, less of an imprecatory nature of condemn the injustice. Uh, David asks for protection in two ways when his enemies attack. First of all, the physical uh, and, and other attacks of the ungodly keep David safe. But then that introspection, Lord, keep David safe from the temptations that the ungodly bring before him. So his prayer, guard my lips and my heart. And uh, Wendy, would you mind reading here? Uh, go ahead and take uh, verses uh, one through five, a, a psalm by David. It's a couple of these sections here, verses, again, one through five. Lord, I call to you, hurry to me. Turn your ear toward my voice when I call to you. May my prayer linger before you like incense, the lifting up of my hands like an evening offering. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart turn toward anything evil. 
to take part in wicked deeds with men who do evil. Let me not taste their delicacies. Let a righteous man strike me, it is mercy. Let him rebuke me, it is lotion on my head. My head will not refuse it. Yeah, thank, thank you for reading there. And again, David calling on the Lord uh, in prayer. Remember, this is a, a, the second of six prayers by David uh, asking uh, for the Lord's protection uh, here. Uh, and you may notice verse two, especially anyone uh, who's uh, attended or played an, a musical instrument for, uh, for the Vespers or evening prayer service. Uh, may my prayer linger before you like incense. A different translation is, let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening uh, sacrifice. So, uh, so that's that evening prayer that we may have. And what does that mean? Those temple offerings uh, that, that were given to the Lord, uh, you know, gifts from a devoted heart. Well, prayers uh, ascend to the Lord uh, as evidence of that devoted heart. Uh, just in the way that that incense did. And so there's, there's that picture, that representative nature of, of incense uh, rising up just like our prayers. I don't think we've burned incense in our sanctuary. Maybe that's because of fire code. Uh, maybe it's just because it's not the tradition that uh, we have in, in our circles. But there is a, a beautiful picture there of that. And any questions, comments on, on verses one and two? And so then, with, with that prayer of, of David asking that the Lord uh, listen to his prayer, uh, he asks for protection. But this one uh, is, is saying, yeah, keep me from sinning, right? And, and think of David doesn't want his own lips to, to sin. Uh, his own lips, you know, think of how our lips can lead to sins of others. My lips may lead to somebody else's anger or even somebody else's aggression. Uh, my lips may lead them to, to, um, to, to hatred. So I want, want my lips to be covered, but even before it can be seen or heard, actually sin didn't start on my tongue. Sin starts in the heart. Sin starts in the mind of that sinful nature. And so verse 4 it gets to that core that is there. Don't let my heart turn that way. Don't let my heart turn toward anything evil. And yeah, that the delicacies, the, that wonderful food of sin, that uh, short-term pleasure that the devil would, would attempt us toward uh, that leads to the consequences and long-term pain. Uh, I don't want to taste of those delicacies. Um, and those of you who follow me know also, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've made a few comments from time to, uh, to uh, Chronicles of Narnia and, and this section, don't taste their delicacies. You know, that, that reminds me of, little, of Edmund and the White Witch's Turkish delight, right? That was really uh, that, uh, that picture, that symbol, that allegory in that story of, uh, of the sin uh, attracting us. Uh, Kathy, you have a comment? Uh, when reading verse three, I thought of the something you see on Facebook a lot that says, Dear Lord, please put your arm around my shoulders and your hand over my mouth. Okay, yeah. And uh, we, want, we want that, that, um, that shield for our mouth. Uh, keep that guard there so that um, that uh, I, I watch what I say. And, and maybe the, the, you know, another concept to have is before I speak, let me mull that over in my mind for at least three seconds to remember Christ. And then remembering the cross of Christ, say, do I still want to say what I was going to say, especially in the heat of, of emotions? All right. And then correct me, uh, verse five, what, what a wonderful thing that the Lord uses to yeah, the Lord puts his arm around me or covers my mouth sometimes when I get some correction from a fellow Christian, that uh, we need Christian admonition. We, you know, it's sometimes something that I'm reluctant to give. Who am I to judge? Uh, but I should still you know, be that loving Christian to speak up in a loving way when I see someone 
who's crossed the line of sin or approaching that line of sin, opening the door of temptation. Yeah, that is my job to, to be a loving Christian and share a rebuke. Or when someone, even a pastor, receives, uh, re receives that correction. I, I've needed to receive that as well personally and take it to heart that uh, I, don't, I, don't, I need to work at not receiving it with a grudge. So, um, yeah, one of those ways of, from Kathy's point, yeah, God does put his arm around us when he gives me a fellow Christian to aid in the, the correction. Questions or comments through these first five verses of Psalm 141? Carol, please. It's the guarding my heart and my mouth and the correcting me. <clears throat> the, it's so hard to put into words as good as David does, because that's just exactly how my human nature reacts. It just, it's instantaneous. The evil inside me is, is right there to come out of my mouth. And, and it, and it just, it's irritating because that's just, that's what we, the baggage we carry around with us. And, uh, and again, it, it is so good to have have groups like this because even even in here comments that people say or that you say or the just the commentaries of the psalm help to bring it home and make it usable yeah but good I'm, I'm glad you you feel that way and, and yeah we do need that support from others because how quickly if i don't have god's word or somebody else sharing god's word with me how quickly um, yeah, my lips go straight to hurting back or, or whatever it may be. Uh, that's, that's my sinful nature, the sinner in me wanting to react. And so um, I guess we stopped actually in the middle of verse five, um, and we are back to, uh, let's see, I don't know if Sue has read. Sue, we're going to let you read um, the two sections, reject the wicked and the closing plea. It's the middle of verse 5 through the end of, of the psalm. Yes, <clears throat> yes. But my prayer is still against their evil deeds. Their rulers will be thrown down by the sides of the cliff, and they will hear that my words were pleasant. They will say, as one splits and breaks up the earth, so our bones have been scattered at the mouth of the grave. But my eyes look to you, Lord God, in you I take refuge. Do not take away my life. Keep me in the snares they keep me from the snares they have set for me, from the traps of the evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by safely. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so David, yeah, he's not going to refuse that uh, that correction, but he's going to pray against the evil deeds of others. Um, you know, he's not going to tolerate them, and he's not going to respond, return evil for evil, but he will pray against evil. And asking the Lord to have a very harsh judgment, especially when the rulers, the, the government officials, right, uh, misuse their power or participate in, in the oppression or lead the nation into sin. Um, and the words... Uh, that, that David says that the words of grace from God and even the law that, that cuts, you know, so that we can receive the, the salve of the gospel and, and, and the medicine that heals, all of those words are pleasant. You know, Psalm 119 and delving into all of that delight in God's word and sweet to my mouth, uh, that, that all comes back to mind in the, in the recent studies we've had. Verse 7 is a little little tricky to understand uh, the, in the Hebrew. Uh, so our English actually added, they will say, it, it's, uh, it's what the footnote says. Those words aren't there in the original Hebrew, uh, but it really is indicating that this quote here in verse seven is the wicked um, describing their own fate, right? Splitting and breaking up the earth. That's where our bones have been scattered at the mouth of the grave. Um, really indicating the Lord's judgment upon the wicked and, and putting that on, uh, on the wicked's own, own tongue in their, in their own words. Um, and the Lord, uh, the Lord leads David to seek good, oppose evil. Uh, again, Lord God, 
uh, Lord and, and God, that combination of, of, the, of Yahweh and El, that basic name for God, and, and that makes it a personal thing for David. I'm taking refuge, and I'm looking there for the protection from the evildoers. Um, and when he does that, when he, when he does speak against the evil and reject them and pray against them, he knows he's going to be a target. And he says, I'll accept that. But as I'm a target and receiving the attacks of others, I'm also going to trust in the Lord's uh, refuge uh, for deliverance. Any questions or comments on, on any portion of this Psalm 141? And one more person join us. Thank you for joining us, John. Uh, Sue, you have a comment, please? Um, you mentioned when David was uh, being pursued in the government, the leaders were evil. Um, I like verse 8, especially because so many times when you see leaders today um, allowing evil or making laws that permit evil, um, it's a nice prayer, but let my eyes look to you, Lord God, in you I take refuge. Um, sometimes it doesn't feel like you have any any power to do anything but just to pray. Yeah, one wonderful thought. My eyes do look, look to the Lord. Um, sometimes I don't have power to do anything except pray. And even when I take advantage in, in this nation of the authority and the Bill of Rights and the things that our government uh, has granted me in the Constitution, right? My God is not the Constitution. My God is not the government of the United States. I will use those rights that I have in, in my station in my life, but my ultimately my eye is on God, the Lord, who is going to function through that government that uh, really is one of those governments on this earth that has been instituted by God. No authority exists except that which is established by God. Yeah, excellent thoughts. So anything else on, through uh, Psalm 141? Yeah, good, good commentary today. Um, we're going to continue and maybe not make it through both of the, the remaining Psalms, but let's at least look at Psalm 142. And uh, John, you joined us today. Would you mind uh, reading uh, verses 1 through 5. I think you have the New King James to share with us. Uh, this, this one is another prayer for deliverance uh, from the wicked. Uh, my spirit grows faint, and it's a masculine by David uh, when he was in the cave. Uh, it's a prayer, and we talked about this in detail under Psalm 57 um, that also addressed David's time in the cave. That was a long time ago. First um, Samuel 22 or 24, there are two events when David was in a cave, um, hiding out um, uh, from Saul and, you know, some of the darker days of his kingdom, but then also and not before he was king, darker days in his life, but then also um, times when David's trust in the Lord came through. So John, again, uh, now that I've introduced it with a lot of words, I'll let you read verses 1 through 5. I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path in the way in which I walked. They have secretly set a snare for me. Look on my right hand and see. For there is no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has failed me. No one cares for my soul. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And, and does David's weariness just really come through there? Um, crying out, complaining distress, and, and even growing faint. Um, uh, even though it's a specific situation me mentioned in the heading, very general terms in this prayer are really fitting for almost any persecution the Christian may suffer. And I would say that even it doesn't even have to be limited to persecution. Anything that makes me tired or weak. And um, I think 
Didn't someone just say in the commentary or questions of the previous psalm, being frustrated or worn out or tired of, of how, to, how to make it through this whole situation in life and dealing with that sinful nature that's still a part of us and the sin out there in the world? All of that makes us weary. And verse 3, I think, speaks to, to even, you know, it's amazing how the Lord answers our own prayers with his own thoughts. Um, I'm uncertain, Lord. I think someone mentioned that in the commentary of Psalm 140. It's really hard to apply this uh, to our daily life uh, with the complicated nature of everything going on around us. Well, my, my spirit grows faint in that, and God still knows all even when we're uncertain. Some might say, well, that's a cop-out. You're, you're not actually taking one side or the other. No, it's taking a side as far as it's clear, and then it's leaving it in the Lord's hand. Yeah, he is the one who knows all. Um, but not only does David ask for relief here from his enemies, you know, people who have hidden a snare before him, it's Saul's people and so his soldiers. Uh, he also is asking for relief from the fence sitters, maybe the, the, the people in Saul's kingdom, maybe even some of Saul's soldiers who are fence sitters at this time, right? They prefer not to get involved. I'm not going to take one side or the other. And David is crying out to the Lord um, uh, for that. And, and we'll talk in just a moment. I think in here, verses six through seven, if, uh, Let's see. Carol, you're at the top of my list again. I don't know if you read recently, but I'm going to have you read verses 6 through 7 to, to wrap up this psalm. Pay attention to my loud cry because I am very weak. Rescue me from those who pursue me because they are too strong for me. Set me free from my prison so I can give thanks to your name. Then the righteous will gather around me because you have accomplished your purpose for me. Yeah, thank you for, for reading there. You know, that, that weakness, listen to my cry, rescue me. And, um, and when he says that, what, what's the purpose? Again, it's not a selfishness, only thinking of himself. Even being relieved from the attacks and, and freed from distress, freed from prison, described in verse 7, what's the purpose? giving thanks to the Lord's name, right? Uh, God's actions on David's behalf, as I summarize in, in the notes there, will lead the righteous among David, even then, then verse 7, to recognize David as chosen by the Lord. Righteous will gather around me. And you think of Jonathan as that example of someone from Saul's own family, recognizing the truth of who David was. And just speaking to that difference between David and us as Christians, none of us were anointed as, as God's king for our day. And yet, as our actions follow God's will and our words follow his law and his clear gospel, uh, it does become obvious that we are, who is following the Lord? We are following the Lord. And, and righteous people will gather around those who follow the Lord, including me and you when you, when you do that. The questions or comments here on, on this Psalm uh, 142, uh, when our spirit grows weak. Carol, please. Yeah, like in verse, the end of verse four, no one cares about my life. This not the only <clears throat> prophet of God. I think about Elijah with all the awesome things that happened to him. He often got depressed too, and I'm the only Christian left. And 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 then Jonah when he was in Nineveh, he was so sorrowful about everything, and no one cares about what I think. What a human reaction! But God, but God cares for us and takes care of things even though we get in this dark place where we think no one cares. And then, you know, like Sue says, we can, we can turn our eyes toward God. And even though we're feeling like it, 
it's only the devil making us feel like that. And God can take all that away and he can take care of every situation. Yeah, very true. How often do we feel exactly those words? I'm glad you, you, you shared that, those thoughts. Yeah, how often do we feel nobody cares? Nobody cares about me. I'm all on my own. And what does God respond in the clear passages of scripture? I care. <laughs> Look what I did with my own son for you. Look at that proof. I, I do care. Sue, comments, questions? Um, yeah, all through this um, particular psalm, I was thinking how dangerous it is for us when we get that weary because we are so much more, um, the devil has so much more chance to uh, cause us to uh, sin or continue in sin because um, you know, we are so hopeless feeling. So that's when, again, that prayer, um, looking to David, looking to someone strong, finding a, a companion in Christ to uh, get, give you that strength or that boost to pray and to, to um, look on a um, more positive side when you're that tired. Yeah, right. When, when we are tempted to, uh, to uh, the sin of despair, there is uh, right there are there are those two roads we can go to continue in that sin or to repent and and recognize the Lord gives us the way out and brings us out of that through through just that look at the cross that that faith in, in the cross uh, so many so many different examples in the Bible come to mind um, you know, of, of faith and and what just came to mind looking at that cross of Christ and him being the refuge I thought of the uh, serpents, the fiery serpents, the venomous serpents in, in the wilderness when Israel had sinned. And what did it take? Looking at that, that uh, staff, Moses' staff with, with the serpent on it that, that really was a, a, a symbol, uh, something that they could tangibly look at to remind them of the promise of God. That, that's really faith. Looking at, looking at the cross of Christ in faith um, brings us out of out of that despair and distress. Yeah. Excellent thoughts and comments. Anything else as we kind of wrap this up? I'm not going to move on to uh, Psalm 133. We'll save that for Wednesday evening, but welcome any concluding thoughts that you may have. Yeah, so when my spirit grows faint, I'm just going to share the prayer uh, that concludes Psalm 142 out of the uh, Lutheran Study Bible. So uh, please uh, listen along and bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, when I have no one to turn to, help me realize that I can turn to you. Be my defender, my refuge, my portion in Christ. Bring me out of my prison and into the company of your church now on earth and in eternity. Amen. Again, thank you all for joining us.